A very warm welcome to Productivity Compass by Zoho Project. We are delighted to have Mr. Korath Matthew share his thoughts on project management in fourth industrial revolution. Mr. Matthew, an ICT expert and a project management veteran, comes with over three decades of widespread experience. After his stint with the Indian Army, Mr. Matthew spearheaded the Akshay IT mission in the state of Kerala. In Unique Identification Authority of India, he set up public distribution systems, pension schemes, and service deliveries to Aadhaar. He also helped increase Aadhaar-enabled transactions from mere 1,000 a day to a million every single day. Mr. Matthew has also helped set up Smart City Indore and Capital City Amravati. At the moment, he is helping set up smart cities of Kosti and Shillong. Enunciating all of Mr. Matthew's achievements itself may need an hour. Hence, I'm keeping it short. Before we start, for the interest of our attendees, I have a few points to make. The talk will last for 60 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. You can post your questions in the Q&A section on the left panel of the screen. Our team at Doho will collate them and share with the speaker. Yes. At any point, the video or audio is not clear enough, please refresh your page. For more updates and future talks, please follow us at the whole project. Mr. Matthew, the forum is now all yours. Thank you. Good evening, all participants. Welcome to this webinar on project management on the fourth industrial revolution. I thank the organizations of SOHO for this webinar and giving me the opportunity to speak on such an interesting topic as project management in the fourth industrial revolution. I hope you will find this webinar interesting and informative. I learned that SOHO has a high-tech project management system and they have started the use of AI in the systems. This session will give a glimpse of what AI can do. At the end of the session, we'll take the question answers. Now the fourth industrial revolution started way back, but we have to start from the first industrial revolution in 1765 where it all started with steam engine. The man's exploitation of the nature also started along with it. The second industrial revolution, 1870, with the invention of electricity, and it also started with the mass production at that time. Third industrial revolution in 1969, started with the invention of electronics, information technology, and leading to the automation. The fourth industrial revolution is a current and the developing environment in which disruptive technologies and trends such as the Internet of Things, 5G, robotics, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain are actually changing the way we live and work. Now, advent of technology is inevitable. There is always a rat race since Maximum profit is possible only with the latest of technologies. Man has to adjust to these terrifying demands of innovation. A nation that uses superior technology will produce high quality products at cheaper rates. Other nations automatically have to follow suit. Let us give a small example with respect to the driverless connected cars or automobiles. Many developed countries are experimenting with these connected cars today. Look at the present scenario when the two vehicles are being driven by human beings. They approach the junction. At the same time, the drivers have to take the decision. A slight mistake miscommunication and there is a chance of an accident. You look at the self-driving connected cars. Is there a chance for it to collide with each other? Practically no, because 
they are all part of a single algorithm they all work in unison a simple example is a data packets moving through the same fiber in the internet they don't collide with each other because there is a protocol in place today more than 90% of the road accidents are caused by human error either they are drunken driver or they sleep or because of carelessness or miscalculations replacing this with driverless cars would actually get rid of this 90% of accidents imagine a connected system where there are no traffic lights everything is moving in sync sync in a synchronized manner moving with the same speed there are no traffic jams now the challenge is can you have the human souls are driving in the same area well then you will have two systems and in such cases there is always a chance of accident which means that you have to reserve this entirely for one system which is the driverless cars well these are the challenges which we are going to face in the future but at the same time driverless car are going to make the system more efficient more productive and it is incumbent on many nations to adopt the same this may cause job losses but this is a changing reality the changing global order today you have deglobalization and economic patriotism which are causing countries like united states and china to declare trade war while uk is brexiting from european union but the world is integrated and even happening in one part of the world is quickly spreading to other parts as well the pandemic is the best example the so much international movement the virus spread into every country in the world in a matter of days literally flew into every country in every continent in a few days this is not possible in the times of first and second industrial revolution it means the effect of technological advancement the technological advancement is irreversible it is not possible to deglobalize even if nations want to no part in this world is isolated if anything happens in one part of the world it will affect everyone and it is important for everyone to cooperate and come to a solution without proper cooperation we will not have a solution to the pandemic another follow to the technology the world is facing is concentration of riches 1% of the world has more than 50% of the world's wealth held today the top companies like they call it fangs microsoft google facebook amazon apple have all in excess of 1 trillion dollars of market capitalization probably much richer than many of the countries and their assets are owned by asset companies and there are rich people billionaires behind the show so this kind of a concentration of riches is happening and this is also creating the divide today politicians are using polarization of people to get votes this is also causing rifts between the people and there is lack of cooperation the unfortunate part is that there is unsustainable development economic growth is directly proportional to environmental degradation since the first industrial revolution there has been continuous environmental degradation we had the technology wherewithal and knowledge to reduce the same but then we were all looking for opportunities to make more money to make the world richer but at the cost of the environment world produces 100000 tons of plastic waste every day now this is causing literally environment degradation beyond our control jobs are at risk today 
in the sense that World Economic Forum had said that additional jobs will be created, but which means tremendous reskilling. You can't ask the driver to be a data scientist. Most of the blue collar jobs are being phased out. Farming is getting automated. Driverless cars are coming. We have robots literally taking over the assembly line and it's all driven by machine learning and artificial intelligence. The philosophers say what? Will humanity survive the 21st century? So Martin Rees predicts a bumpy ride ahead. So far, we've never thought about such a problem. Mankind has lived for over 10,000, probably 70,000 years since the, since the Homo sapiens were supposed to have taken birth take in Africa and migrate to various places. So far, we have never thought about such a problem. But then, we are predicting a doomsday at the end of the century. That's a kind of exploitation which has taken place. According to renowned author Yuval Noah Harari, the three threats facing the humanity in the 21st century are technological, nuclear and ecological. And in this, he feels technological challenges are the worst and most difficult to manage. The, the world has to think about sustainable development. If we have to sub, if we have to create a better tomorrow and make a better world for the next generation. Sustainable development is what requires. Is that meets the requirement of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Project managers have to be aware of this from now onwards. Mahatma Gandhi said, the earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs, but not every man's greed. In fact, we had the tools and technology to provide for this, but then our greed has taken over much more and the environment disaster is consequent to that. All these goals of the sustainable development goals all have to be met if you have to sustain this century. So there are social, environment, and economic challenges. We have to be economically viable, socially viable, and should be environmentally viable. And then comes a sustainable option for us. Project goals so far, and it will continue for some time, the main objective of project management is to secure maximum output with minimum efforts and resources and justified means so far. We never bothered about our sustainable development goals. We have to think about aligning our project goals with sustainable development goals if we have to move forward in this, in this century and ensure that our next generation also is able to live forever. What is the way forward? This webinar will focus more on the change scenario in doing project management, challenges and opportunities, and the way to approach project management with tools and information available to us in the fourth industry. The requirement to adopt to the new technology to be efficient and cost effective, also the requirement to be carbon positive and adhering to the software develop, uh, the sustainable development goals. Let's look at the impact of technology on project management. Look at project planning for that matter. We start with you know requirement gathering, the stakeholder collaboration. The backbone of this project planning or the project's entire life cycle is now a project management system. Your data collection is so easy. The internet will provide you most of it. There is no sampling required. The big data collection is possible. The stakeholder collaboration is possible. And a decision support system will analyze the artificial intelligence built into it, will provide you the best of options, and therefore goal setting becomes easy. The project team of the future will consist of men, machines, and technology. Now, when I talk about men and machines, 
who are going to be these men? In fact, machines will take over many of the jobs, blue collar jobs which I said. So, men will be actually managing these robots or remotely operating these construction machines from far or remotely doing the farming or there are driverless machines, uh, driverless vehicles which have to be managed. In fact, 70% is expected to be machines and men just 30%. In the IT industry especially, the technology comes in and you have most of it available as a software as a service model. The big data analysis is all available on a software as a service model. Let's say you lose your phone. The Google has got all the data and you buy a new phone and it is quickly populated with all the data. It is the big data analysis and artificial intelligence at play again. So this is not possible to create this such systems in on-premise mode. You have at best platform as a service, but software as a service is a way forward. So there is an integration of all these things as far as the project planning is concerned in a project management system. It will break down the works into minutest work breakdown structure. And then the budgeting and baseline will be easily done by the project management system. Coming to project execution, communication becomes easy because you're all working on the same platform. Today we are working from home, but we have the project management system ensuring that everybody gets information correctly. The procurement action, for example, let's say if it is a construction, from the design onwards, the bid documents are made, quantity surveying is done. The bid processing is done and even reverse auction and contracting is done. Thereafter, monitoring and controlling also is done by the project management system. Real-time monitoring is possible, collaboration using video conferences extra is so easy. Let's look at other uh, aspects. I'll try a real life example uh, or try and compare with the COVID scenario and how was it managed in a through a project management system which is driven by artificial intelligence. Let's say it's estimated that when testing for COVID, if the percentage of positive cases are more than 10 percent, then we should increase the testing. So the chief medical officer has to constantly monitor this. So that if it is if a project management system, it will collect the data and it will report to you that zone A has got 12%, zone B has got 8% test positive cases. So you have to actually ensure that additional testing is done in zone A while zone B, which has got more testing kits, you may shift to the zone A. So the project management system inventory, inventory uh, reporting will automatically suggest, yes, there are 50 kits available and the CMO will shift this kit and it just gives the order. Probably a driverless vehicle will be taking it from zone B to zone A. But this gets repeated the next day. The next day it may be zone Z. And again the CMO will give the decision to shift the thing. We should note that the project management system driven by machine learning is learning every day. Then after a couple of days, it will say zone A has 12%. Zone A, B has got 8%. There is so much of extra kit in so, uh, testing kit in so and so place. Shall I shift the kit to project uh, zone A site? All the CMO has to say is yes, and it will be done. 
few more days later, the system is learning more. Now it knows the habits of CMO. It is learning every day. It will just simply say, report to him. Zone A had 8%, Zone B had 12% positive cases. I have shifted from Zone A to Zone B. It will merely come as an alert to the Chief Medical Officer. I hope I have made you clear how an artificial intelligence system will automatically take over in such a scenario. That is what is expected from the project management system driven by machine learning. And that is what is expected in the future too. In the previous slide, I explained how in a project management system, which has got artificial intelligence and machine learning, automatically continues to learn and improve upon its functions. Let's take a live example in the form of uh, at the great duel between stockfish versus alpha zero. Now, if you remember, Deep Blue was the first computer uh, that defeated the Earthfield champion uh, Kasparov in chess. These were all based on rule and having huge database, which means that all games that were played before were fed into the computer and rules were created. And that was the first stage of artificial intelligence. Subsequently, Stockfish came and it, it became the world champion after defeating Deep Blue. Then came Alpha Zero. Now, Alpha Zero had a, continuous, a completely new way of artificial intelligence. It was based on machine learning and deep learning, which means it was self-learning. So it started from zero. There was no information available to it. But it started playing chess. A lot of data was put into it. And in a matter of four hours, it began better than stockfish in ELO ranking, ELO points. After nine hours of training, after nine hours of self-learning, Alpha Zero played against Stockfish. And the result is after out of 100 games, 28 wins were in favor of Zero, Alpha Zero. There were zero losses and there were 72 draws. So that is the power of self-learning using artificial intelligence. In such a scenario, is management necessary? The project management system will be the backbone and it will gather all the data, intelligence and decision support. It will bring together everyone on the same platform. It will do the cost-benefit analysis. It will say whether man or required or machine or required for a particular job. And it will continuously improve upon things, learn and suggest. Many jobs will then be lost to robots. Will you tolerate a robo as a boss? No, the first robo, Sophia, I put her on the right side. She's giving a very certain look, probably to the subtask managers and employees. She could be a robo, your next boss. A robo could be your next boss. That's a big question today. But then there are many more things than just project management. There is something known as emotional intelligence. Robots don't have a soul. They don't have empathy. They can't understand job loss. They can't understand job loss will create economic difficulty for a certain employee and that he has to be taken care of. Those crucial decisions will still be taken by human beings. Humans will continue to provide vision and strategy. The money investment is made by the human and therefore the final decision will still be there with the humans. Technology will only augment. At the same time, we should be aware there are three civilizations that coexist. 
Alvin Toffler is made that first wave, second wave, and third wave. He described it very clearly: the agrarian revolution, industrial revolution, and the information revolution. We still have the Eskimos and the cave people and the tribal people in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, or many other places. The rural areas in India still use bullock carts and bullocks for tilling land. In many of the government, we still have file movements, which are almost 200 years old. They still write on the noting sheet and move things. So, project managers are still required in these waves. Everyone is not automated, but a major part of the people are moving into the cities. And for you to be competitive and effective, you have to adopt the latest technology. Now look at the personal leadership qualities which you require. Well, when we, if you we say humans have still a lot of role to play, then personal leadership plays a very important role. Knowledge is paramount. This is in the words of Field Marshal, Field Marshal Manaksha. He said that knowledge is paramount. Unless you have knowledge, there is no point in having other skills. This is the most important skill of a leader. He wouldn't know what to do. He has to be decisive. He should have the courage of conviction. He should take responsibility for his action. Again, to slightly digress from the topic, I will quote the example of our great leader, our great general field marshal, Manaksha. The 1971 uh, operations, prior to that, when Indo-Pakistan uh, was having a face-off, they had occupied Bangladesh, erstwhile East Pakistan, and uh, refugees of the tune of around 10 million migrants moved into India. Cabinet was called and the then strong Prime Minister Indira Gandhi ordered Manaksha to go into war with Bangladesh immediately. He knew for sure that we are not prepared. In the summers, the Himalayan borders are not closed, only in the winter. So we may have two fronts, one from the China, one from Pakistan. What have made the cause? He had the courage of conviction to say, no, we are not prepared. Well, the whole of cabinet was aghast. They were all looking at him. And most of the people were saying, Please agree to the Prime Minister's decision. But he stood his ground and the cabinet was dismissed and there was a di different thought. Well, the Honorable Prime Minister agreed to his request and he was allowed six months of training and preparation and the rest is history. In 13 days, East Pakistan was won over and Bangladesh was liberated and the new nation was created. Subsequently, Field Marshal Manaksha made a statement. Those were tough days. There is only a very thin line being dividing between being sacked and being a field marshal. So one should have the courage of conviction to say what is right and wrong. We cannot destroy the environment. Our sustainable development goals have to be met as project managers there is no substitute. We have to protect our team, protect the interests of the company, protect the nation, protect the environment. We have to do a tight row walking. And there are a lot of challenges. And should I have the courage of conviction to say yes or no and give the correct advice? Communication skills are very, very important for a project leader. This is not just about the project management system communicating, communicating with the people to get everybody on. This is about motivating people. There will be somebody down, somebody making mistakes. You should be able to rally the team together. The communication skill as a leader is very important. Should I have the capability to take risk? Collect data, weigh the pros and cons, but take the decision to go ahead. You will never have 100% data. Perfect is a killer of good. 
you have to take a decision at 60% or 70%. But having taken the decision, you have to take responsibility for your actions too. Be just, impartial and empathy is all very, very important. Emotional intelligence, you call it. Today, the top companies in the world, the CEOs, many of them are Indians. I don't know what is the cause for it. Is it data intelligence or emotional intelligence? I don't want to put anything on anything. But probably the Indian culture. You, you have the same pattern. People educated in India migrate to US and do the post graduation and then grow up to be Indra Nuis and Sundar Puchais and Satya Nadellas and what more. You have thousands of them who do excelling in the project manager's role, the chief executive roles. Should have the capability to handle failures. This is most important because through failures we learn. Success may not teach you as much, but through failures we learn and you should have the capability to take on failure. Leadership is solving problems, said Colin Paul. The day soldiers stop bringing you their problems is the day you have stopped leading them. There are everyday challenges in project management. I don't want to quote any of my examples, but dealing with the government, dealing with lots of problems in the field, you have everyday challenges. Your subordinates will be constantly having a lot of problems. Don't shut them off. Listen to them. The day you stop listening to them, you stop becoming a leader. A leader is actually servant of the team. Well, project manager and a leader. Well, I would say a good project manager should be a leader. And the leader should have these very good qualities and much more. I've only listed some of them. You would have more depending upon the kind of environment in which you're handling. Now, a great classification by Jack Welch is worth mentioning here. He talks about numbers and values. He said people who have numbers and values calling into the first quadrant are the best. But then you come to the second ground. You may not have numbers, but you have values. He said, train them. They are loyal to the company. They are loyal to the team members. They, they show companionship. They show empathy. Build them. Train them. They're also good for the company. There's three type of people. That is, you don't have the numbers nor the values. You can easily identify them and fire them. But the fourth type of people, they have the numbers but no values. Imagine, what are you going to do with them? It's extremely difficult to deal with them because you can't find any fault. They're claiming, they're showing excellent results, but they're actually stamping on top of the companions and stealing credits. Very bad for the company. They have to be identified and removed from the system if you want to build the team and synergize the team and build the company. That is how the great Jack Welch classified project managers. The world moves on trust, not on rules and regulations. Everybody knows that. You can't go to a court and be a project manager for everything. You can't show rules to your comrades. They have to trust you. They have to believe you and do everything. Salesforce chairman has made this beautiful statement. Trust revolution is needed if business are to fully embrace the potential of the fourth industrial revolution. Nothing is more true. This is a way to synergize the team. Now, if you have a team where you trust, you build in creativity in them. If you build in creativity, they will think slightly differently. But instead of one mind thinking, you have multiple minds thinking. And if you synergize them, you find that whole is more than the sum of parts. One plus one is, can be more than two. 
if there are good team players and if you trust them. The great Steve Jobs said, A players, A players hire A players, B players hire C players. Nothing. And he practiced, he always hired A players into Apple. Some of them actually became his competitors and he was actually, he was actually forced to get out of Apple, but he rejoined. Finally, Apple became a great company. It became the number one company, but he continued to hire A players and A players made a great company. On the other hand, B players hire C players. Why? They want to be safe. They don't want competition. They want C players who will not compete with them. But at the end, the company doesn't grow. That is the basic difference. You have to make a good team. And for that, don't compromise. Don't compromise on the talents. Always try and hire the best competent people. Meritocracy finally thrives. Let's come to the summary. There is a new world order today. People are fighting. But de-globalization is not possible because of technological advancement. We are all integrated. The pandemic ends the next time. With constant progress and economic progress, environment degradation is happening at a faster pace. We have to be always mindful of sustainable development goals if we have to survive this century and safeguard the interest of our future generation. Fourth Industrial Revolution ushers innovative technologies. There has been never dearth of technologies. Technology is doublets. We can use these technologies for the good of the human being. We can use the surveillance system, data, all for the good of the human being. But at the same time, this can also be a double-edged weapon. We can, it may destroy the environment, it may, serve, it may create surveillance on the people, it may create joblessness. Can we be inclusive? So that is what we have to think today. Personal leadership, trust, and good team is all very, very important. Hence, project management is not just about producing the best of results with minimum resources, but concentrating about having a worldly knowledge about what is happening around and creating a better tomorrow. Thank you. And if you have any questions, I would like to take it on. Here we come to the end of the session. Thank you very much for your talk. It was really inspiring. Uh, you know, very few of them do talk about sustainable development goals and the need of the year. And I guess it's, it's the dire need of every project manager to use them. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for taking your time off to participate. And uh, I hope it was useful to you. And uh, I hope I've given some message with respect to the project management system and also with, with respect to the challenges with the world is facing. Uh, we look forward to a better tomorrow. Thank you and good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.